Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Hello and welcome. We will start our discussion of forecasting expenses in our financial forecasting in Excel course. In the previous modules, we had discussed the forecasting methodology and applied that methodology to forecast ABC's net sales. Forecasting sales is just one piece of the puzzle. In this module, we will continue our P&L forecasting discussion and forecast the other line items to get a complete picture of ABC's profitability. For any company, net sales are the dollars coming in. So by forecasting our net sales, we already know how much does ABC expect as net sales in the future years. Now, in addition to the dollars coming in, your financial forecast also needs to consider the money going out. And that is why we need to model the other cost lines to get a complete overview of the business. As far as the cost of sales is concerned, we need to forecast all costs associated with the delivery of revenue, which includes labor, materials, and overhead. The selling general and administrative expenses are the operating expenses, which include personnel costs as well. These personnel costs are a major component of the selling general and administrative expenses. And then we have some minor costs such as other expenses, the interest expense, the non-service related post-retirement costs, and the provision for income taxes that needs to be forecasted. We also have a small amount on this line, which is the net income attributable to non-controlling interests. We will look into that as well. Once we forecast the remaining income statement lines, we will be able to forecast the net income attributable to ABC company in the future years. Let's get started. To forecast other line items, one of the tools that's extremely useful is called the vertical analysis. It's a universal tool for measuring the firm's relative performance from year to year in terms of cost and profitability, and it should always be included as part of any financial analysis. In this analysis, we simply compute the percentages in relation to net sales, which is always considered to be 100%. This vertical analysis effort in the income statement is often referred to as margin analysis, since it yields different margins concerning sales. Using these historical margins, we will forecast the future margins. First, let me explain how exactly are these historical margins calculated. For example, if we look at the cost of sales figure of 87%, this is simply the net sales of 2016 divided by the cost of sales of 2016. Similarly, the margin of 5.4% for selling general and administrative expenses for 2018 is simply the net sales for December 2018 divided by the selling general and administrative expenses for 2018. This gives us a 5.4% margin for SG&A. We follow this approach for all other lines as well to arrive at the net income margin. The net income margin means that of the 100% net sales, 4.4% falls in the net income margin line. As you would expect, two of the biggest cost line items for any company are the cost of sales and the selling general and administrative expenses cost lines. Let's apply the vertical analysis to project our line items for the future. As discussed previously, net sales is always a hundred percent and the other line items are margins of that net sales figure. Therefore, we keep the net sales from 2021 through 2025 at 
Let me also mention that to forecast the future amounts, we are going to take guidelines from the historical cost and expense margins. For cost of sales, we can see that the average cost of sales margin is around 88.5%, and we can use this figure for the future years. The gross profit margin is simply the net sales minus the cost of sales. For the next five years, our gross profit margin is around 11.5% which is in line with our historical gross profit margin. Likewise, the selling general and administrative expenses have historically been around 5.5%. We can assume that the future SG&A margin on this base as well. The other net income expense line is negligible and we can assume it to be zero for the future years as well. To calculate our EBIT margin, we have used the gross profit margin and then backed out the selling general and administrative expenses and the other income expenses line. We arrive at an EBIT margin of around 6% for the future years. As we can see, the non-service related post-retirement costs are negligible and we can assume it to be zero for the future years as well. Interest expense is based on the amount of debt ABC has. In order to forecast the interest expense line accurately, we need to make realistic assumptions and use the information we are able to gather on the amount of debt. For ABC, let's assume that the amount of debt for the future years is going to be in line with what we had historically, which means that the interest rate will also be in line with the historical average. The historical average for interest expense is around 0.3%. Let's now calculate the earnings before taxes or the EBT margin. The income taxes have hovered around 1.6% historically. The net income margin is simply the EBT margin minus the provision for income taxes. For net income attributable to non-controlling interests, we see that the average is 1.2%, but over the past two years, in December 19 and December 20, it's more like 1.7%, which does imply that more recently, the net income attributable to non-controlling interests has been higher. In this case, it makes more sense to use the historical average over the past two years as opposed to the average over the past five years. The average for 19 and 20 is 1.7%, which we can then use to forecast the future years. And finally, the net income margin. We have now calculated the margins for all other lines using historical data. That concludes the current module. In this module, we discussed a critical financial analysis tool, the vertical analysis. We applied our vertical analysis to the income statement of ABC going through all the line items. Join me in the next module as we continue with our income statement forecast for ABC. Hello and welcome. The second part of our forecasting expenses discussion in our financial forecasting in Excel course. 
Let's move to our Excel file to continue our discussion. In the previous module, we calculated the margin percentages of all income statement line items. In this module, let's forecast our P&L line items using these percentages. We need to use the net sales figure for the year we are forecasting and multiply that figure with the margin percentage we calculated per line item. For the December 21 cost of sales forecast, we will use the sales number for 21 and multiply it by the margin percentage. We will follow the same approach for all the other years as well. These cost of sales figures are telling us how much direct costs has ABC incurred for manufacturing its products. In December 22, ABC had $131,298 worth of sales, but $116,199 of that amount was incurred as a direct cost for the production. The gross profit is simply net sales minus cost of sales. So in our forecasted gross profit figure, you can see that the gross profit is ticking upwards in the future years and that is primarily due to the increase in sales that we had forecasted. Let's follow a similar approach for selling general and administrative expenses. We will use the forecasted sales number for the year and multiply it by the margin percentage for the year. Let's copy the formula across because the approach is the same. As you may recall, for this other cost line, we kept the margin percentage at zero as it was very immaterial. So we should have a zero forecast for the future years on this line item. So we can now calculate the EBIT or earnings before interest and taxes. This is the gross profit minus the selling general and administrative expenses. And the other cost line. The non-service related post retirement costs were also quite small. So we had kept the margin percentage to zero. So we will not have any forecasted figures on this cost line. A similar approach to the other cost line. Interest expense margin was kept flat at 0.3% because we assumed that the debt levels for an ABC company will remain in line with the historical average. Let's now calculate the EBT or the earnings before taxes. On these earnings before taxes, a company needs to pay out income taxes. So let's calculate the provision for income taxes. This is the amount that ABC is provisioning for expected future taxes. Yeah. 
If we back out the provision for income taxes from the earnings before taxes, we arrive at the net income including non-controlling interest. Now we just need to forecast the net income attributable to non-controlling interests, relatively smallish figures in the past years, to calculate the net income attributable to non-controlling interests, we need to use the net income including non-controlling interests and use the margin percentage we had assigned in the vertical analysis. Remember, in order to forecast for this cost line, we do not use the net sales figure because in order to calculate the income attributable to non-controlling interests, we need to use the net income, including the non-controlling interest figure. After all, we are not trying to calculate the net sales attributable to non-controlling interests, but it is the net income attributable to non-controlling interests. Now we have forecasted all the other cost lines. As a last step, we can now forecast the net income attributable to ABC company from 2021 through 2025. Based on our forecast, it seems that the net income starts to move upwards, primarily due to an increase in net sales. That concludes the current module. In this module, we use the line item margins calculated in the previous module to forecast our income statement for ABC from 2021 to 2025. Please remember that the vertical analysis is a very useful financial management tool. You need to carefully understand the application of this approach. I encourage you to go through the modules again if the application of vertical analysis is not clear. Hope to see you in the next modules as we forecast the other financial statements of ABC. This video is part of our full course on financial forecasting and modeling. To take a look at the course, click over there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to see similar videos, click over there.